In 2020, for most of us, this is the first time we've ever experienced a quarantine or a lockdown. My mum and dad who live in England are living in a country that hasn't experienced a curfew like this since the 1700s. And it's strange, disorienting times. How do we stay positive in this unprecedented season of fear and uncertainty? What choices can we make even now before we know how this is going to play out that will help us stay in a healthy and positive frame of mind to tackle whatever's coming further down the track. When I was at Theological College 30 years ago, I discovered the Gnostic Gospels. I say I discovered them, they were discovered in 1947 in the Nag Hammadi Desert. And it was an archive of materials that had been controversial in their day, in the early period of Christianity. These were texts that were of interest to heterodox Christian sects. They weren't part of the orthodox mainstream. And you read some of the documents and you think, mm, I can see why that didn't make it into the Bible. But there are other texts full of very interesting concepts, concepts of close encounters, alien abductions, astral traveling, all kinds of con out of body experiences. And among those is the concept of an entity called an archon. Now, according to the Gnostic Gospels, an archon is an energy-based being. It's a little bit like a virus in the sense that it lives off the emotional energy of biological life. And archons are generally portrayed as exciting, darker, more negative thinking and more negative behavior among human beings. And then the archons feed off that energy. If you want a wonderful illustration of that, go to Star Trek, the original series from the 1960s, and there's an episode called The Day of the Dove. And in that story, the ship is invaded by an energy being that is feeding off the anger and fear and aggression between the Klingons and the humans. And it takes them a while to work out that's actually what's going on. As soon as they realize that they're being manipulated by this energy being, they realize the answer is to make peace with one another, to relax and begin laughing and being happy together. And when they do that, the Archon changes from this energy field into this tiny little bug-like creature which crawls off and uh, shrivels up. It's a lovely illustration of what the Gnostics meant by Archons. And I think the message of that episode and of the Archon stories is that we should be very careful about what place we allow ourselves to go to energetically. That we should be very conscious of behaviors that don't serve us. Behaviors of fear, anger, aggression, paranoia, and be careful not to be sucked into that place. Now you might say, well, that's fine, but archons aren't real, are they? Well, I don't know. But whether mythical or real, how would an archonic energy do that? Well, the fact is, we can do it all by ourselves. There's a part of our brain called the amygdala. Some people call it the reptile brain. It's a very primitive part of our brain and its function is to keep us safe. And so it generates the flight, fright or fight responses. It is always there doing that inside us. Now, usually when we're healthy and well and balanced, our higher functions balance all that. So you're walking down a street, your amygdala is going to say, is that person friend or foe? And your higher function will say, oh, that just looks like someone who lives on the street. And you relax and you carry on your journey. When your higher functions are damaged or inhibited, then your reptile brain can run riot. And that can happen in lots of ways. When we are shocked, when we are overwhelmed, very often that's when you see our flight, fright, fight response. And I think we need to be very careful not to allow ourselves to be pulled into that space by everything that's happening with COVID-19. You can find examples of archonic manipulation in the Bible. There's a story called Job. 
in the Bible. And in that, there's an iconic being, an energy being, that wants the challenge of seeing if it can get into the thinking of a particular human being called Job to such an extent that it can stop him worshipping his God, that it can so fill his mind and his circumstances that there'll be no room for joy or gratitude left. And that's what the story's about. It's the same archonic energy with which Jesus wrestles at the beginning of the gospel. Gideon, there's another example. Gideon's army is preparing to go into battle, but an archonic energy has gone ahead of them, and the enemy have fallen into a state of terror and fear and are all fighting and attacking one another. Those are all illustrations from the Bible of archonic power. But whether you think an archon is a mythical entity or a real entity uh, or a metaphor, algorithms can achieve exactly the same. If an image or a video is shocking enough on YouTube or Facebook, just look at the thread that follows. And there's that flight, fright, fight response where what's coming out of people is really negative and it's pushed people into a really negative space. I think that's what we need to be really careful of while we're navigating the uncertainty of these waters. You can be overwhelmed by what you're seeing on the TV, overwhelmed by having the radio on in the background, on the hour updates from the government, alerts in flashing lights as you drive down the street, which is what we have here in Canberra. You can be overwhelmed just running through your Facebook feed. And I think we need to look after ourselves, protect ourselves from the kind of shock and overwhelm that then allows a fear response to take over. It's not that there's nothing to be frightened of. When the police can stop you and search your shopping bags or stop you in your car and ask your ID and say, what's the purpose of your journey? When you're in your hometown, uh, that can be a little bit scary. And if you've moved to a relatively free country, from a country where state authority and command economy are the thing, to have made that move and suddenly the police can stop you for being out on a walk with your dog, it's scary. And on top of that, you've got the uncertainty of the virus itself. Where I live, I'm part of a demographic that's been completely left out of the emergency stimulus measures. So there's no income guarantee, no rent guarantee, anything like that for people like me who are self-employed. People who've lost their jobs can't pay the rent, can't pay the mortgage. There's plenty to be fearful of. So how do we stay positive during what's a very uncertain period? Because we don't know how long this will go on. We don't know the impact it's gonna have on our personal economies, our local economies, or the global economy. We don't know what the shape of the world will be when we emerge from it. So amid all of that, how do we stay positive? Shock is a really bad state to be in because it pulls all your energy and your resources away from other things like health and happiness. And so I think we need to be really conscious about making a choice away from fear and to a place of love. They're kind of opposites because fear pushes others away, love moves towards other people. Fear closes yourself off, love opens you up. And of course, at the moment, we're being told, advised, not to move towards one another physically. But you know, even in a lockdown, even in quarantine, you can make a choice to move towards love. I've been amazed walking around my suburb. I'm seeing things I haven't seen in years. Families out for a daily walk of sunshine and fresh air. I go out for a bike ride every morning and I go for a walk every afternoon. And as I walk past people in the street, I'm experiencing something quite different to the norm. Because where I live, normally you, you might acknowledge each other, but probably you just walk straight past. In these days, even though we're keeping our social distance, we look at each other, we acknowledge each other, we greet each other, and there's this feeling of recognition. We're going through something, aren't we? You're doing your best to stay healthy and sane, aren't you? I'm doing the same, and I wish you well. 
And there's that kind of energy and feeling between strangers as we pass each other on the street. That's been my experience. And I think, well, wouldn't it be nice if it was like that all the time? Because it's true all the time. My mum and dad, living in the UK, who are a little bit older, have had people contact them, still maintaining the social distance rules, of course, and saying, are you okay? Do you have everything you need? Well, isn't that how it should be all the time? So I feel there are some lessons we're learning and things we're remembering, even in these difficult times, that are to our benefit. I live uh, in a little townhouse complex here in Canberra, and the people who live here range from retirees to newborns. And it's a complex where people tend to keep their distance a little bit because we're living close to each other. But in these days, there's been a little bit more of a you okay, a little bit more of sharing of resources to see that we all have what we need and are getting by. Well, that's how it should be. One of the ways that you can look after your frame of mind during these strange times is to think what are the lessons I'm learning and that I can share with others. Viktor Frankl, a famous writer and psychologist, wrote the book Man's Search for Meaning. He, in the Second World War, was in a concentration camp, which he managed to survive. And he said one of the ways he managed to survive it mentally was to have in mind, what am I gonna teach my students after I've got through this? What are the lessons I'm learning about humanity here that I can teach? Well, as you and I go through this COVID-19 time, what are the lessons we're learning that we can teach when we come out of it. And I want you to imagine sharing your lessons with a child, not in a, I learned some things about humanity and it would do you well to learn them as well. No, things that helped you and that might help them. I learned not to take my friends and family and neighbors for granted. I learned to breathe more deeply. I learned to go outside every single day for sunshine and fresh air and exercise. I learned to wash my hands thoroughly before I sit down for dinner. I learned how interdependent and connected we all are as individuals and as countries. I learned not to believe everything an authority tells me. I learned to give off a friendlier energy as I pass people in the street or as I buy things at the supermarket. I learned to bake my own bread what are the lessons you're learning in these strange days? Things that have helped you and that can help others. And I'd love you to share any lessons like that in the comments below so that we can be a bit of a community like that. One of the uncertainties is how we're going to live if our economy becomes too damaged. Are we going to have to think about our supply chains? And I think about how people lived in my grandparents' day that was a time when extended family was more normal, where living intergenerationally was more normal. My gran and grab lived in a line of terraced houses. They were semi-detached houses in England, and they had long stripped gardens, and they all grew things, and they all made their own food. And they had a way of sharing life together in that little community of, I think it was about 16 houses, and it wasn't so much a barter economy as a sharing economy. You know, one mum would say to a child, oh, take these apples from my garden to your mum, see if she can use them. Oh, I've got some spare eggs here. Would you like to take those home with you? Things like that. There was one family that had chickens, one family that had goats, one family that had heaps of vegetables, one family had a little orchard. Uh, one family where the dad was really good at technical engineering things. And that was a big part of how they lived and how they shared life together. Are we going to need to rediscover one another in ways like that as we emerge into the new economy? Whatever the new economy looks like, whether it's very similar to the old one or it's entirely different, or there's a little bit more sharing and neighborliness going on, whichever it is, one question I'd encourage you to ask is what will you bring to that new economy? How will you live different? 
what are the positive lessons you've learned? And to get your mind into the, what will I do different after this? I think is one way that's really helpful in helping us get through the uncertainty of the present moment. One of the ways it's affected me is I have a book launch that was scheduled in Sydney for the 2nd of May. Well, that can't happen in terrestrial form anymore because we're not allowed to gather. So I'm having to uh, make some adaptions. So I'm gonna be doing some free giveaways in live chat. I'll do a live chat on my channel. I've got some interviews coming up with Jason Bland, The Fifth Kind TV, and some others as well. I'll keep you posted on this channel. Go to my website as well, paulanthonywallace.com. That'll keep you up to date with everything that's happening with Escaping from Eden, interviews, documentaries, and things like that. Whatever's going on, we're certainly in a time of change. And while we're in isolation or in quarantine or in lockdown, it's a little bit like going into our cocoons. And I think that's a pretty good metaphor because before the cocoon, what does the caterpillar do? All it does is consume, getting fatter and fatter and fatter, less able to move around. I wonder if that's a metaphor for what was happening with all of us before COVID-19. Then it goes into the cocoon, which is a little bit uncomfortable. I'm finding it challenging, I must say. And then what comes afterwards is something that the caterpillar, did it know it was coming? In my mind, what comes after the cocoon is something completely new and different. Are we doing our cocooning in such a way that we're ready for what comes next? Are we making sure that we and those we live with and those we catch up with on the phone for the how you going conversations are in the right place to bounce back as we enter the new waters on the other side of COVID-19? I wish you well, look forward to meeting you in the comments. All the best.